So, I'm trying to think back. This must have been the late, no, it must be the late 60s. I think the late 60s, it had to be late 60s. I don't think I was in the Air Force yet. I read this book. Now, there are certain eras of, 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 of literature. Like they talk about the Harlem Renaissance was a big era. Well, to me, my greatest era was like the, basically the early 50s. People wrote from the early 50s to say the early 60s, right? And then there's that, that whole McCarthy era kind of thing. But I read this book. It was a novel. It was a novel. I can't remember the title. I can't remember the author or anything like that. Uh, uh, but anyway, the novel, what the novel was about, or what, one of the things that came out in the book, was that uh, it took place like in the 20s, and the setting was in the 20s, and it was like this plot to um, uh, to take over the U.S. government, and part of it was going to be a long-range strategy, and part of the thing was basically to 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 elect incompetent people to <laughs> to, 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 to 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 political office. Uh, anyway, this was a long-range plan. Okay, it was just a novel. Now, what I learned, what I realized, and I think, and the reason why the, the early 50s into the 60s was so interesting is that um, there was a lot written by, there was a lot of stuff written um, by, I don't know who was writing, but it's almost like the CIA was writing stuff, like, you know, they were getting, uh, having people write stuff, a bunch of people were writing stuff, but a lot of stuff that came out then, those books were absolutely true, had to be absolutely true. I don't know what that meant, means, whatever. Now there's so much stuff out, there's like, it's like it's your, your, your hurricane going, and you don't know what drops to, to, to let in your mouth for nourishment, what, what drops just to leave alone because it's, it's, they're toxic. Anyway, I bring up this whole book thing, is that there's a thing called long range strategy. <laughs> now, this is going to be a little bit uh, lengthy one, I think, uh, because I have to go into this. Um, uh, for instance, my understanding is that, well, what I, what I can see is that the civil rights era, I'm not talking about black power, well, black power, civil rights era, what the, what the powers that be realized is that the best friend that black people had at that particular time was the judicial system. That's what Thurgood Marshall, you know, with the whole civil rights that he became Supreme Court Justice. Was the, ju 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 the judicial system was, was basically their friend. So you had, uh, so of course judges had to do whatever the law said, okay? So the laws were there, and you had to do that. Well, anyway, uh, wait, just let me go back to Thurgood Marshall because he messed up because Thurgood Marshall got off the bench by, I think it was Jimmy Carter, while Jimmy Carter was still in office, but he stayed and then, you know, I just, that's not to sleep that long. Um, anyway, so I think what happens, the, the the brain trust, whatever it is, uh, 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 let's call them, let's call them, let's call them uh, Anglo racist white supremacist. Uh, okay, it's just just the, the, the term. Uh, anyway, folks, folks got together, caucused, you know, like they did when Obama became president. They, at the same time, at inaugural night, they were into some back whole room uh, at some uh, restaurant, you know, saying that we're going to oppose everything this cat does, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, and they came up with this strategy, basically, to take over the judicial, judicial system. They were already working on the, the political system, you know, gerrymandering, and rest, rest, rest of that stuff. Um, and, and, and what they did was on college, on college campus, like the places like uh, where, we, where most of your judges come from, like you know, Harvard and Yale and stuff like that, Columbia, I guess. Uh, maybe not so much Columbia. Anyway, they had the, uh, they have these uh, organizations, these Republican like organizations, and so, so while you were in school going for your law degree, if you uh, were part of this organization, they would sort of help you through, and then you would basically owe them. So when you became, when you went through the ranks and you became older and older, and then finally you get to some, you become a. a, a a politician or some sort of a judge or whatever have you, they know to pick you because you, when you were, even when you were in, in school, you were like a, you know into this side of mindset. Okay, so that was a strategy. And lo and behold, come you know come about Reagan time and on uh, the Bush whatever, then 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 you get these uh, these these judge, judges that were like outrageous. How could you think about that kind of thing? And. Um, and so, 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 so now we have the whole uh, judicial system against you. Now you have the whole, well, then, well, then Bill Clinton came and then you had the whole judicial, not just the judges, but just everybody <laughs> just against the downtrodden. Okay. Um, so let's, let's leave that for now. Uh, then then what, 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 what goes on, you, you have this thing, where, again, Reagan with the whole trickle down. People went for that. I don't know who went for that. Then you had, then you basically had um, Daddy Bush. And he, he starts a war because he wants to keep his, um, his, 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 his compatriots, his, his boys out of jail because of the whole SNL scandal. So he starts a war in, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in Iraq 
to to few, so you won't be thinking about that, you know. So they sort of you know, get the, the easy ride, not an easy ride, but they, they get fine, but they don't lose they don't lose a whole lot. Okay, then of course you have uh, you have. Uh, uh, Clinton, who just made this whole whole thing, let me be more Republican than let me out Republican and Republicans, which is what he did. Let me stop saying Republicans and Democrats, but these false lines it just just bothers me. Uh, let let me out white supremacists. You know, the white supremacist. That's basically what Bill Clinton did from Arkansas. Okay? Good old Southern boy, you know what to do. He 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 wrangled it like, like he he wrangled it better than old than, than LPJ could wrangle it. Okay, so that's what you have with that. Then next next comes Baby Bush, who takes basically the same administration that his daddy has and puts those people that were coming up through the ranks into his administration, they do what they do. Then you have Obama, who takes the administration, not only uh, people from the Bush administration, few, I mean, whatever, FBI chief, whatever they had to do, but also the people from the Clinton administration, that the administration that did all the damage to the downtrodden. So now you have this whole perfect storm where both both these so-called major parties are, are doing the bidding of, of Anglo racist white supremacy. So now we have a situation uh, right now, where where we have the president, uh, uh, president elect uh, Donald Trump, um, uh, what he's well, he didn't have to do anything. All he had to do since since since, since the Democratic Party, whatever that, you know, they, they went more towards the money people than and or, or, or the haves. And then you have a big have, uh, Donald Trump. He says, hey, all I got to do is excite the uh, the the, uh, the Anglo racist white supremacist. And I shouldn't say that. All I have to do is excite. Um, the have-nots uh, to say that I'm, I'm, I know what the deal is and I can do it for you, and so you have what you have. But it's mainly because the Democratic Party or those the other the other, the, the other branch of the Anglo-Racist white supremacist to just said, well, let, let us give up on on these folks. Let us let's try to go for the money. It didn't work. Okay, I, I bring up all that just to say that. What what uh, all this time I should say the independent not registered any party was growing 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 growing. So the problem I see right now is that we need to stop labeling. We need to stop these labels. It's as simple as that. Just stop your label. Do, don't you, you say? But, but how could you stop a label? I'm black. Well, yeah, I'm black. Sure, I'm black. But I'm also downtrodden. So am I going to which which label do I want to take? Black or downtrodden? I mean, you know, I might not be as downtrodden as a whole lot of other people, but I'm certainly on the downtrodden scale. I'm certainly not the billionaire class. So th that needs to be wiped away. This whole Democratic Party needs to be wiped away. There's a simple answer to all this, and many people have written about this. I know Dr. Claude Anderson has written about this. a paper, a whole book on this thing. It's Palonomics. And it's basically saying, look, stop affiliating yourself with these, uh, with these organizations, with these uh, Anglo-racist white supremacists. If you're going to be black, just be if you want to do a label and you want to be a group, just be black. Forget political. You're just going to be black, and you're going to be voting as as black as a black party. You say, "Well, blacks are not monolithic." Well, we should be monolithic. It's it's like Africa. You know, they, they come and call up Africa and all these different countries, and then people get confused. They think that Africa is a country. Well, it's interesting. Well, Africa should be a country. Forget all these borders. You, you, you see, you understand what I'm saying? So you're African because you're on the African continent. You're you're, you're autochthonous to the African continent. So you you act as an African, not as a Kenyan or or South African where we are right now, or or, or you know or Moroccan or, or Libyan or you know Malawian or you know. Don't act like you know, Botswana. Don't just be African, and then you start thinking as the good for the entire land, the entire continent, not just for your little piece of thing when you give your tribute to your 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 water, your political leader that's that's doing the bidding of the Anglo racist white supremacist. So the same way in the States, you should be black. The people they, they, they think that people, all black people are like, well, make it as a black voting block. And so it's, instead of being divided in all these little camps like that, all you have to do is be Total black. If you want our vote, we'll, we'll talk as one big. You want to vote, you forget our vote. We want this to be done. We, we set this policy. Whoever it is, you set this policy because the downtrodden, we need this policy. But to do that, let's see what happens. Because obviously, this, if nothing else, this whole election process has shown that you know the downtrodden ain't got no friends. Because even right now, as a, as a, as as, uh, as uh, President-elect uh, uh, Donald Trump is putting together his cabinet, it's not for the good of the downtrodden. That's for sure. So when everybody starts waking up, they get rid of these labels like that. You, uh, if you want a label, downtrodden or the have-nots versus I don't like to say that. 
the downtrodden versus the Anglo racist white supremacist, you know, that system like that, get rid of that system, that's what has to be done. That's what I think. Me, BMT, for the Patterson's, taking the trenches to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.